Miss Janice telling them to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what did you mean? Oh, well, she wasn't quiet Friday night, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Thankful this morning for God's blessings and everything that, that He does for us. And uh, sometimes we take uh, simple things for granted in life. And, uh, one of the things that we have in abundance in our life is water. And I was listening to uh, a reading, maybe, about the new push in the scientific field is to transplant human life on Mars. That, that's one of the objectives that we're striving for. And, uh, they claim that there is uh, water on, on the planet. I'm not so sure, but when you think about our life and how important that water is to human life, it's, it's really quite fascinating, something that we just go to the faucet and run and use whatever way we choose to clean, to drink, but without that source of water, we couldn't live very long at all. Life would, would become non-existent for us. It, not only for our bodies, but it waters our planet, which grows the vegetation, which produces the oxygen that we breathe. And, and all life depends upon the substance of water. According to science, our bodies, the male body is like 60% water and the female body is 55% water. And, uh, so we contain a lot of water in our bodies. But this scripture today in John chapter 7, Verses 37 and 39. It was during a time of a feast. The Jews were celebrating the Feast of the Tabernacles, they called it. And it was a seven-day feast in which they would live in booths made of trees branches and things of this nature and it was to remember their forefathers pilgrimages coming through the wilderness for them 40 years and on each of the seven days the high priest would go to the pool of shalom and dip water into a golden vessel and then this water was poured upon the sacrifice that they had prepared at the altar and as the water was poured out, the people would sing and, and shout and, and praise the Lord their God for his wonderful blessings. It was a time of celebration and worship for the people. And uh, it continued for seven days, this, this celebration of worship. But then on the eighth day, it says that they called this the great day of the feast. And on this day, sacrifices were once again offered, but there was no singing, there was no shouting. This was known as a solemn day of repentance before the Lord. Another element was also missing this day, and this was the fact that they did not pour the water on the sacrifice on the eighth day. And it was at this time that Jesus stood up and proclaimed uh, the fact that he was the source of the living water. And that's sort of a strange statement, seems to be, to many folk, that he himself was a fountain 
of living water. And I believe whenever that he spoke this, that there were thousands of the Jews gathered there, and they all would hear what the Lord Jesus was speaking, and everyone would pretty much instantly understand what that he was making a reference to, and what he meant when he said, I am the living source of the living water. He proclaimed himself to be that place from where the living water flowed. Now, Jesus isn't the living water, that's not what he's saying, but he is the fountain where you and I can find the life-giving water that if you drink thereof you shall never thirst again. So, throughout the New Testament, as we read and study, water is a symbol of the Holy Spirit of God. And I think Jesus is making a reference to the fact that it's from Him that the Holy Spirit of God is flowing. He is the source for where God's Spirit can be imparted to all humanity. And once we receive the Spirit of God and forgiveness of our sins through Him, then he says, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water. So it's the Spirit of God that comes into the sinner and shows him his need for salvation. We're told that without the Spirit of God, we couldn't even be born again because it's God's Spirit that draws us. And, John, and Jesus said it like this, And when he, the Spirit, is come, he will reprove the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment. So it's the Holy Spirit, God's Word, that's applied to our hearts and our lives that brings conviction upon us as sinners. No man can come to me, Jesus said, except the Father which has sent me draw him. And he says, I will raise him up at the last day. So it's the Spirit of God also that seals the believer and makes him secure and his eternal salvation. And it says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. It is the Spirit of God that fills the believer and uses him for the glory of God. It says, Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit of God. So you and I, as Christians, we are to be filled with God's Spirit, the life-giving Water And as we are filled with that spirit, it overflows and bubbles out of us to all those that are around us. You see, salvation involves every member of what we refer to as the Holy Trinity of God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One that abides with us on a daily basis is the Spirit of God. Now the living water that Jesus said would be flowing forth from Him and we would be filled with and overflowing in our lives. Jesus is the fact that he is the source of that living water. So this morning without the Spirit of God then we are dry and we are thirsty. And once we taste of the Holy Spirit of God then we are forever saved. Before the water of life could be dispensed to the lost and dying world, the fountain of living water had to be opened up. Jesus speaks to that in other places in the same manner that a fountain of water here on this old earth we drill a well and water comes up and we receive that fresh water so Jesus Christ had to be poured out for us he was uh, torn apart on Calvary as he gave his life for us in that like manner as to where the living water flowed from he allowed himself to be mocked to be bitten to be spit upon and crucified so he could be opened up and so the water of the Spirit might be free to flow to needy humanity. We all stand thirsty for something in life and we sometimes can't figure out exactly what we're needing, but we all need a taste of the water of life that freely flowed from Christ Jesus. The primary thing we need to understand today is that what Jesus, when he went to the cross and died there, he was not just dying for me, but he was dying for you. He was dying for all humanity that we might drink of the water of life freely and be saved eternally. 
He done that for you. He done that for me. He was dying because he loved us, not because he was a bad individual, not because he had done something wrong, but he was dying because of the great love that he had for us. He was dying because he loved us and wanted to make a way for us to spend eternity in heaven and miss the destination of the eternal loss. So, so thankful that Jesus died because he loved us so much he was willing to give him life. God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, the Bible says, that Christ died for us. I would never think for a moment that Jesus didn't die for us because God sent his son into the world, it says, to save us, to die for us, and become that source of the spirit of the living God. So this morning, in fact, if you if you had uh, if you had been the only sinner in the world, I believe this morning, if just one of us was a sinner, that Christ would have given himself for us because we all, his love was so great for just one lost soul. So he paid the price for our sins. When I think about the great blessing of the Spirit of God, that living water this morning, it brings many, many blessings into our lives. We have eternal life. We have salvation. The primary benefit that Jesus give us in coming and when we go to Jesus by faith is that we become eternally eternally saved by the grace of God that when we're saved we become whole and complete by God's grace. We're saved from what someone said one time. We are saved from the pains of hell, eternal damnation. The Bible says that there's a place where uh, those that don't know Christ Jesus as their Savior will spend eternity and it's referred to as a lake of fire. So this morning, Christ saved us from a horrible eternal destination that we all deserve because we have all sinned. We all come short of God's glory this morning. He saved us from that eternal damnation. And I'm so thankful this morning to have Christ's Holy Spirit living within me. The sinner is condemned and doomed before God without of Christ Jesus. He that believeth on the Son, the Scripture says, have everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. You see, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forgot God. It's not a happy ending, but Christ Jesus has given us his Holy Spirit this morning that we can have life and have it more abundantly. When the same sinner comes to Jesus that's condemned and guilty before God. When he comes to Jesus by faith, that sinner is saved from this horrible destination, delivered from death and protected from the wrath of God. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Much more now, being justified by his blood, the scripture says, we shall be saved from wrath through him. He says, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So we see this morning how wonderful the gift of the Spirit of God is, that it cleanses us and saves us from the destination that we all deserve by God's grace and God's mercy. The soul that has placed its faith in Jesus Christ for salvation never need to fear again of ever being lost. It's Jesus has promised to us this morning. Jesus said, we leave and trust in Him. We have eternal life. You see, this morning, salvation will change our lives here, and it brings us into a place of blessings into the family of God. And this morning, being able to be a child of God, being able to be a part of the family of God is a great blessing beyond compare, and it's given to us through the Holy Spirit God. We'll go to heaven one day when we leave this old world and be with Jesus Christ, God's Son. He's going to prepare a place for us, he said. And if he goes, he'll come again to receive us into himself, that where he is, we too can be there also. So this morning we have eternal life through the spring that flows from our Savior, Jesus Christ. What a satisfying thing that this is for the thirst and hunger that uh, within mankind. You notice that... It says, from the belly shall flow rivers of living water. And I thought that was an interesting statement that our Lord made. Shall flow rivers of living water. The belly is the part of man 
that seems to never be satisfied. When you think about your belly, uh, you give it something and then not very long it wants more and so is the material things in life that, like a belly that we just keep consuming and wanting more. But it says out of that part of our being shall flow rivers of living water. So Jesus says that if we come to Him, then we can receive this flow of God's eternal blessing. Jesus abundantly satisfies the soul of man. So that longing, that yearning that humanity tries so uh, deeply to satisfy through the things of worldliness can only be satisfied by the thing that Jesus Christ is speaking of, the living water, the spirit of the holy God. So there's an emptiness in humanity that's longing and reaching for the spirit of God. And this is one of the reasons that there is so much confusion in our world today, people trying to fill and satisfy that thirst for God with something other than the Holy Spirit of God. But when we place our faith in Jesus Christ, we have tapped into the fountain of living water that will never, ever be exhausted, but will abundantly satisfy for our eternal life. So this morning, we have this strength of this water that never dissipates, it never never runs dry, never runs thin. It's always there and constantly refreshing the life of the believer, the person that has it. The living water is that which comes and gives us the power that we can have, gives us joy and gives us hope in this world. This morning it's God's Holy Spirit in our hearts and in our lives. There are many who say that they could never live the Christian life and how true this morning that this statement is. But with God's Holy Spirit within our hearts, within our lives, we have the ability. I can do all things, the scripture says, by Christ which strengthens me. So this morning it's the Spirit of God that makes the Christian life possible for us fleshly human beings. Without that Spirit, then we are hopelessly lost. We can never do as God would desire us to do, but when that Holy Spirit comes into our heart and into our life, it makes it possible for us to live and do what Christ Jesus desires for us to do. It gives us the ability to serve. So this morning, this water of life that is placed within us forms a mighty river, Christ says here, that flows out from us and touches others around us. So it also gives us the ability to be a witness for what Christ has done for us. Whenever that we receive Christ's Spirit, it bubbles out of us, runs over and flows in a way that no one can ever imagine in their natural and fleshly state. The Lord is saying that there will be sufficiently satisfied and that he will use us to reach others for his glory is what he's saying whenever he says mighty rivers shall flow from their bellies and the Christian people will do the things that God desires and tell others about the great blessings that God has given them. You see when the children of Israel were traveling in the desert and one day Moses struck a rock in the wilderness and it opened up and flowed forth in the desert and refreshed everyone that came in contact with that water that Moses had stricken the rock. So it is with us. You see this morning when the Spirit of God empowers us to minister to others and become a source of refreshing around those that are close to us, we can refresh others with that Holy Spirit of God. And this living water, the amazing thing is it's available everyone. He says, whosoever thirsts this morning, if you're thirsty. And thirst is like a conscious desire for something not in someone's possession. You know, if we're desiring water and we don't have it and we're looking for it and we're thirsty. Before someone can be saved, he or she must sense that they have a need of salvation have to be thirsty and longing for God before that spirit can come into their heart and into their lives. As long as they are satisfied in their sins and content with the life as it is, and they don't have any thought for God, which is a position that many people of the world are in today, <laughs> salvation will never come to them if they can't experience a thirst. 
And it's through our overflowing that they realize that they need God. They see their need and they desire or thirst for salvation and satisfaction for God. And they can come to Jesus and drink of this water of life freely and be saved by the grace of God. And I think that's what Jesus was trying to demonstrate to these people there that day, that he wasn't the living water, but he was the source from where that water would flow. I wonder, people searching everywhere for things that simply don't and cannot ever satisfy their soul, but yet there's this longing, this hunger, this searching in the world that people are looking for something to satisfy that inward part of our nature. But they're not willing to come to Jesus. And in this great feast that day, Jesus said, Hey, listen, I am the source of the living water. If you'll come to me and drink, you will never be thirsty again. He was telling them that I have eternal life. The things that you are seeking in life, you can't find through material aspects of life, but when you come to me and drink of this water of life, you will freely receive the Spirit of God. And when you've received the Spirit of God, it will become a river of living water boiling up in your belly and flowing out to others, flowing out into a lost and dying world. So, Jesus makes... All the difference in life, it's really quite simple that with Christ Jesus, when we come believing and trusting in Him as our Savior, He fills us with the Holy Spirit of God. It leads, it guides us, it directs us, and keeps us in God's eternal plans. And Jesus invites all the thirsty to come unto Him this morning, anybody that's thirsty. He gave an invitation. He said, come. If you're thirsty, come. <clears throat> any man, any person. This week we had missionaries killed in the line of duty, I guess you would say, out serving the Lord Jesus Christ, trying to distribute this living water to others. Whosoever, it says whosoever, whosoever will come. This access is open to Jesus Christ and we're to tell it to others in the world. He is a well that will never, ever run dry of living water. If they would only come to him today, he can demonstrate his great saving ability and power. And I'm not sure if NASA will ever plant man on Mars, if it's even possible to sustain life there, if there is water. I don't know, but I do know this morning that you can obtain eternal life. I don't want to go to Mars, I want to go to heaven. And if we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, one day we will spend eternity in a place where the Bible says there's no sorrow, there's no suffering, there's no pain. All these things one day will pass away. So there's great power in the water, the living water that Jesus Christ was speaking of here. And he, you, know, you know, he loves us more than we could ever know. And he longs to save every eternal soul. The only thing that he asked and requires was faith, belief. They asked Jesus one time, well, what must I do to do the works of God? And Jesus said, believe, believe on him who he has sent. So this morning, I wonder how everyone stands in regards to eternal life, salvation, the Spirit of God in their hearts and their lives. We're going to have an invitation in the song. If you're here today and you need to accept Christ as your Savior, we would encourage you this morning to come. <coughs>
accept him into your heart and into your life.